everyone. Welcome to Industry Interviews, Commercial Dance Intensive Sessions with Sissa. Today we'll be joined shortly by Alana Niehoff to talk about her experiences in the professional dance industry. Here she is! Thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm so excited to be chatting with you today. Me too. It's such a treat to have you here with us today and on faculty at the Commercial Dance Intensive. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Where are you joining us from today? Um, I'm in Carlisle, Pennsylvania at home today. <laughs> Amazing. That's so great. Alana, would you like to start us off by giving us a background of your um, training and where you're from and maybe your career and different things like that. I grew up in Aurora, Colorado, and um, I actually started dancing at my mom's studio um, when I was little and fell in love with it instantly. Um, my favorite was ballet, and eventually my mom noticed that I needed a little bit more training than her studio could provide. Um, so we started looking for a conservatory style school for my ballet lessons, but I still really loved jazz and tap. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to another studio at the same time and took um, a variety of different classes there and jazz and tap, lyrical, acro, the whole shebang. Um, and that's pretty much how my training continued. I wanted to be a classical ballet dancer when I was younger. So mm -hmm. that's on the most and um, I ended up going to the Prix de Lausanne and competing which was very cool and um, I ended up going to American Ballet Theater's summer intensives because that was the company that I wanted to dance with and through that summer intensive um, I met uh, two gentlemen a gentleman named Wes Chapman and another gentleman named, named Roger Van Flutteren and at that time they both um, co-directed the Alabama Ballet mm -hmm. um, former dancers with American Ballet Theater, and they um, offered me when I was 15 to join their company as an apprentice to continue my training, but get professional experience that would hopefully maybe launch me into American Ballet Theater. So I moved away from home when I was 15 to Alabama. Wow. And I started dancing with Alabama Ballet, um, but in the summers continued going to American Ballet Theater summer intensive. And um, eventually got hired by American Ballet Theater and their studio company, which was awesome. I had booked my dream job. Um, but unfortunately, a couple years after dancing with that company, I was in a rehearsal and I got dropped by my dance partner. And I broke a bone in my foot that made it difficult to dance on point full time. It was quite painful after that. Um, so dancing with a ballet company 36 weeks out of the year was not really going to be an option for me anymore. Mm. So at first I didn't know what to do. I took a job in a restaurant because I knew I didn't want to leave New York. I loved New York. Um, but eventually I, um, I had some friends that I worked with. They were like, oh, come take this jazz class with me. Come take this musical theater class. And um, I fell back in love with dance by going to go dance with my friends. And it was fun to do something that I hadn't done for a while. I hadn't you know, been in jazz class for a while. I hadn't been in tap class for a while. Um, so eventually I really got back into training and about a year after re-entering into classes, I auditioned for the Radio City Rockettes and I was very fortunate and I booked the gig the first time and I ended up dancing with that company for 11 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that was pretty awesome. Um, at the same time, the Rockettes are kind of fantastic because you work super hard for about four months and then the rest of the year, um, there's gigs. Um, now and again, but you have time off to um, pursue either, you know, musical theater or going to college, um, whatever you want. So I was able to work in a variety of fields and I was also able to start teaching, which I really enjoy. And after I retired, my husband and I, we ended up moving to North Carolina to direct um, a program at the University of North Carolina School of the Arts. And just a couple of years ago, um, we got full-time positions at Central Pennsylvania Youth Ballet, and that's what brought us to Pennsylvania. That's amazing. What an incredible journey. I love hearing about this. And I know we know each other, but for our <laughs> listeners, my first industry question for you, Alana. So you touched a little bit on the first jobs that you had, but my first official question for you, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> How exactly did you book your first job? And do you remember when you found out you booked it, 
how you felt. Okay, awesome. Well, I'm gonna skip maybe my first job since I already talked about how I got my jobs with um, the Alabama Ballet and with uh, American Ballet Theater Studio Company. Um, but when I booked the job with the Rockets, um, actually my first real introduction to the company um, was there was a choreographer named Horace Turnbull who did a lot of the tap choreography for the Rockets. Mm. And um, he ended up watching a class that I was taking at Broadway Dance Center. And after the class, um, invited me to attend a special workshop that they were holding at Radio City. So it was like a whole day of basically taking classes in the rocket style. And they had a few of the choreographers there as well as a, a rocket. And um, of course, the one thing that every struggling artist loves to hear, we're gonna provide you a free breakfast and lunch. <laughs> Yes. You're like, I'll be there. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Like, I will be there. <laughs> and um, it was just an awesome experience. I really enjoyed it. Um, the style felt very good to me and fit well on my body. Um, and he encouraged me to audition. So I was a little hesitant because um, I kind of always categorized, my, categorized myself as ballet as my top, jazz as the middle and tap was down at the bottom. And so I was a little worried maybe my tap skills weren't up to par. And he was like, you have fantastic sounds. The only thing that's getting in the way is you. <laughs> Top <laughs> not believing in yourself. So mm. um, I attended the audition a week later and there were 600 other women auditioning that day. So I was at the audition for about eight hours. Wow, eight hours. Uh, we got called back the next day um, and I was there for about another six hours. And the audition that I was at was an emergency replacement audition. So they were, mm -hmm. the phone calls were going out right away. And at that time I still worked at a restaurant across from Lincoln Center. And one of the rules was you were not supposed to answer your cell phone while you were at work, but I knew they were gonna be making calls. So I kept checking my cell phone and the 212 number came up and I was like, okay, this has to be them. And one of my friends at the restaurant shoved me in the tiniest little broom closet. So that, <laughs> that was the call. And so that's how I found out I was going to be a Radio City Rocket was in a tiny broom closet in the middle of a restaurant in New York City. <laughs> that is an iconic story. I love that. I did my hair in a French twist for you. Today. I, it looks fantastic. <laughs> I just was trying to channel your uh, poise. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that story. It's so exciting to hear like those moments stick with you forever. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it was super exciting. I was on a high the rest of the day at the restaurant. Nothing was gonna bug me. <laughs> I believe it. That's so cool. Okay, so my next industry question for you, Alana, what is something in your career that has surprised you? There definitely have been a lot of surprises, but I have to say that my biggest surprise was um, the day or the time when I figured out that just dancing and being in the industry wasn't enough for me to feel like I was having a full life. Because when you first start out, like it's just like, you just want to be in class, you want to make it, you want to get that gig, and it just feels fantastic. And I've heard about people talking about there comes a point where, you know, you want to have a little bit more balance, but it's, you don't know what that is until all of a sudden one day you're like, why am I not feeling um, as happy doing this anymore as I did at first? And I know that that was a real surprise to me and finding then that balance that made me happy because everybody's personality is different um you know made me enjoy my career more so i kind of mm -hmm. a little bit more on the introverted side and i like kind of being at home and being at, in one place um so i learned that i needed to you know prioritize the gigs that traveled like they needed to meet a certain criteria for me to leave home um and once i figured that out then it would you know i just loved my career and I loved my work and I had time to have with my friends and to have with my family. And, um, you know, I just want to suggest to everybody, like, don't be afraid to find that balance. You know, if you're starting to, you know, feel unhappy, it's not that you don't like the career, don't like the work, you maybe just need to um, access, access it another way. 
Absolutely. I wonder, did you start finding out the need for that balance when you first got injured? First time that um, I think the balance started to occur, but I needed to find it again a little bit later in my career. But yes, when I worked in the restaurant, it was kind of, you know, all of a sudden I went from doing dance 24 seven to not doing any dance and, mm -hmm. you know, was hanging out with friends and going to the movies and going to a club every now and again. And, you know, that was great because I really got to, you know, discover another side of myself. Mm. Yeah. Um, but then again, like I said, when I started getting a little bit closer to my 30s, there was another time where I was like, there's some other things that I want in my life that I'm not doing right now. And I need to figure out a way to balance the two of these things. I love talking about balance. I think that's mm -hmm. so, it's such a great thing to share because as you know, the next generation is, you know, watching this interview, all we think about sometimes is like, I just got to book that job. I just yeah. have to do okay. that bucket list item. I didn't need to get on Broadway. I need to do this. This will make me happy. And talking about how you achieved some of the highest professional um, career positions in our industry. And you found that your joy came from living a balanced life between doing your art and what you love and being a normal human at the same time. Yes, that is a beautiful way of putting it. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. So our next industry question for you, Alana, what is one style or skill you wish that you had trained in before you became a professional? All right. I love this question. Um, I, I'm very fortunate that I did get to take a variety of styles growing up. Um, so I personally don't think I would have had any more time in my schedule to add any more styles into there, but a life skill that I wish I had had when I was younger or had learned before I entered the industry was sometimes to be able to tune out or ignore information that wasn't relevant. Like, um, mm -hmm. a big thing that happened or, and that still sometimes happens but I am so happy it doesn't happen at the commercial dance intensive. I love how you guys support all different aspects of dance and that you can be good in many different aspects. Um, but sometimes growing up, I get from my ballet teachers that, oh, you know, taking those other styles is going to hinder your ballet dancing. And then the same thing when I would go and take jazz or tap or even a hip hop lesson would be like, oh, well, you're just a Trina. Why are you doing this? Mm. And I wish that I had learned how to tune out that stuff earlier, because now looking back at my career, you know, I definitely got into ballet companies because my ballet training was so good. But when I was in those companies, some soloist roles that I got, especially in contemporary ballets, I got because of the skills that I developed in classes outside of ballet. Mm. And then the same thing when I was a rockette, some of the gigs that I got where a camera was going to be close up on me for either video or print. Um, I know I was chosen because of the lines that they knew were very consistent in me from my ballet training. They knew it wasn't going to be a problem for me to hit that 90 degree first arabesque turned out and hold it. Yeah. Um, you know, so I just wish I had been had the life skill to tune that out earlier. And then it didn't take me until I was in my mid 20s to figure it out. I think that's an incredible piece of advice. So Alana, we have a question from one of our listeners. What was your favorite moment during dancing at Radio City? Oh, my goodness. Wow. It is so hard to pick one favorite moment. Um, I feel like well, there were two moments in the show. Um, that I really loved and I tried to take advantage of every time that I would come on stage because you just, you know, you never know when it might be your last time on stage. You know, you never know if a new director is going to come in and they're not going to like you. So you might not get rehired or, um, you know, you get an injury and you have to change, you know, what you're doing the next day. Um, and there were two moments during the show. One was, um, when this big bus enters the stage for a number called New York City at Christmas. And another one was on this huge staircase at the beginning of a number called Shine. 
And at those two moments, um, as the lights were coming up, you could see the whole entire audience. And I would just always try and soak that in. So I have a very real memory of what it felt like to be on that stage, dressed in a beautiful costume, full energy with a house of 6,000 people just ready and anticipating a number. <laughs> and sometimes you would be performing multiple times a day. Oh, yes, we could. Um, we performed up to, well, my first season, we performed up to six times a day. For 6,000 people each time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. I kind of want to ask you another question. Do you want to maybe talk about swings? I, so I didn't work as a swing at Radio City, but I did work as a cover a lot in ballet companies, which is not exactly the same, but similar. I did get thrown on stage a lot in classical ballet, like literally never had a rehearsal, had just learned it in the back and someone gets sick, sick or injured and within five minutes you're on stage in a costume. So I have done that. Um, but yeah, the swings job at Radio City is incredibly challenging, but can be really thrilling for certain people. And so um, the Rocket Line is 36 women on stage at New York City, and they divide all of those women um, between four swings. And so those four swings are learning, you know, six to eight parts with, that are within their height range and literally have to be able to go on stage at a moment's notice, knowing every single person's choreography, costume changes, you know, just basically everything that that person does. And I am just so thankful to all of my swings throughout my career because you, you need them, you know, like, cause sometimes you do get sick or sometimes your body, you know, is just at the beginning of an injury and you need to take a show off and they are, lifesavers and it is a job that I'm thankful I didn't have to do at Radio City but I know some people really love it. <laughs> it takes a certain personality for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay so Alana our next question if you could go back in time and give advice to your 15 year old self what would you tell yourself and why? Excellent. Um, so kind of similar to what I was saying again earlier about ignoring certain things that were being said to me. Um, I think I'd want to tell that to myself, but I also would want to tell myself to just enjoy everything I was doing more. Mm -hmm. Definitely like my angst at, you know, getting perfection and getting hired by, you know, the company that I wanted to dance for, you know, drove me to train really hard and, um, you know, progress in my technique quite quickly. So I wouldn't really want to change my work ethic, but I would really, if I could go back, want to try and enjoy that time more. Absolutely. I love that. I think that we could all take that piece of advice. <laughs> Do you have any words of wisdom for the next generation of dancers at this particular time that we are in? Oh, yeah. I First off, just... Be gentle with yourself and be gentle with the people that you are around because this, not that there isn't any good that, that can come from staying at home, but it is a loss of a life that you're used to at the moment. Mm -hmm. And there are going to be days that you are not going to feel awesome <laughs> and that is okay. <laughs> but then there are going to be days where you feel okay and on those days, you know, trying to stick to a little bit of a schedule really can help you get through the day and still feel normal. Mm. Uh, and when you're having those days that you are feeling productive, you know, take advantage of all of the free arts that are being offered at this moment. I am just loving seeing how the whole arts community is coming together and really, you know, trying to lift everybody's spirits. So there's multiple free videos you can watch you can go to the commercial dance intensives instagram or facebook page and find lots of tutorials um so just to try and enjoy yourself as much as possible absolutely and your tutorials up there as well it's <laughs> lovely we're down to our final question alana this comes from casey's favorite podcast how i built this okay for your success 
what percent is based in luck and what percent do you feel is based in talent and skill? Excellent question. I don't know if I can give exact percentages, but um, as far as the talent, at least as far as I felt with auditioning, um, it's expected that you're going to have trained talent. Um, so I feel like everybody that you enjoy as a professional performer is talented, mm -hmm. but they've reached their high profile or their most pro proficient selves as a performer through their training. So it's going to be expected that you're going to have a high level of training when you go to an audition. And I always felt that that was expected of me. Same thing with the skills. When I was going to an audition, you know, most of the time the descriptions were very clear on what you needed to be proficient in. So I felt like as far as technique skills, again, that was a given. It's like you, when you show up, you know, to qualify for this job, you are going to have to be a talented and proficient in these skills. Mm -hmm. um, but, but life skills are totally another set of skills. And um, I feel like some of those really helped me in my career. And for some people, it's very natural in their personality to have certain life skills. And some people have to d develop them because with any type of career in the arts, but particularly in the commercial field, um, you're going to audition a lot. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear no many more times than you're going to hear yes. And for some gigs, you may be totally right for it, but they might not just have the right opening for you at that time. Like maybe mm. someone one inch shorter or they need someone who has red hair versus blonde hair. And um, you have to, in some ways, develop a thick skin or just be able to toss it off so that you can go on to the next audition or that you can re-audition for that gig when they have it again. Because I have many friends who auditioned for the Rockettes five times before they got it, but then they were a Rocket for 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely, um, I feel like the life skill of not giving up and just being determined <laughs> that I was going to make it work, um, you know, is what helped me have a career and helped me transition into another field after, you know, having a severe injury. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, what was the third one? So talent, skill, and oh, luck. Um, so luck, I don't um, necessarily believe that I was in the right place at the right time for things, um, but that I was ready to show myself off in the right auditions. And mm -hmm. then through those auditions and through the classes that I took, I met you know, tons of friends who, you know, were dancing in a similar field to me and knew my style and mm. had the opportunity to be presented to a lot of people, not through an audition and, and book a gig. Absolutely. That was very well said. I just want to thank you so much. The Commercial Dance Intensive appreciates your time, your talent, and your wisdom. And we're so happy to have you here with us today. Thank you for sharing your experiences with our listeners and with the next generation of dancers. Thank you, Melissa. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. My name is Alana Niehoff. Are you ready to work? Thank you so much, Alana. Bye.